Yet another cringeworthy moment from the state this morning as they tried to introduce evidence relating to the 2015 shooting of Lil Wayne's tour bus. As you can see from this sequence, it does not go well for the state. Now, after you finish watching this first clip, which, you know, you have to let it cook now. You know how it is. This is court, so let it cook, let it develop. But after this clip, we are going to go into a few clips from news reports about the arrest of Mr. Winfrey, who was arrested and pled guilty to charges related to shooting the tour bus. This was back in 2015. But as you will see, this also became a subject that Brian Steele talked about in court today, where he tried to have certain evidence excluded because the prosecutors want to use Winfrey's guilty plea as evidence against YSL when in fact Winfrey's guilty plea was coerced by the state. And you will see that as this develops. So just again, sit back, relax, and uh, let's get into it. Mr. Nichols hasn't really been mentioned in this case. He was not mentioned in an opening statement. He has one little sec section on a, I can't remember the year, 2014, but I don't know the year, small drug case. He, otherwise, he's not mentioned. <clears throat> And then, I'm, not, I'm not trying to argue for the Honorable Ms. Westmore and Mr. Harvey, but that's why he's always asking for 105 instruction. But the point I'm trying to make to you is this exercise also has to inject, if you don't mind, why the state is saying it furthers a conspiracy. Just getting information does not further a conspiracy. That's my point. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jerome, if I can add some additional facts, because I don't want to This is not the only time in this interview that Mr. Copeland talks about the Little Wayne bus shooting. So this is the first time he actually talks about the details of the shooting. At least two more times throughout the course of this interview. So this interview is nine hours long. Mm -hmm. And so in the course of that interview, he gives more and more details about the shooting. Um, All right. Maybe point me to the parts of that. So yes, I don't know if you were able to pull up um, Stafford or if you have it, um, you know, if you've looked at it previously, but um, what it says is the same thing that Mr. Um, Sharp's been arguing for a while about co-conspirator statements, uh, and that is essentially that even where there is a conspiracy that has been established by a preponderance, um, now I lost my place. Here it is. Hearsay statements that implicate a co-conspirator but do not advance any object of the conspiracy, such as statements that merely spill the beans about the conspiracy, are not admissible. So um, if you can point me to how this advanced the conspiracy, and I understand your argument is, hey, the conspiracy is they're all members of an ongoing gang. They need to know what's going on in the gang so they can react like appropriate gang members and be prepared if somebody's coming after them, and that's a reasonable position to take. Um, so tell me how it is that this is advancing an object of the conspiracy and, and not theoretically where your evidence is going to show that. Yes, Ron. So during 2015, there were just a number of different events and actions that took place beginning in January of 2015, all the way through about October of 2015, Your Honor. This um, particular shooting um of Little Wayne's tour bus was was a part of two events. So 
Little Wayne, I'm trying to simplify how Mr. Carter is a part of this. So starting in 2014, Your Honor, um, Mr. Williams had began a musical relationship by the end of, by, with a person by the name of Brian um, Williams, also known as Birdman. Um, Little Wayne is, um, was one of, um, Birdman's artist at the time mm-hmm. back in 2014 and prior to that. Evidence has come in that members of YSL, um, specifically have made threats against individuals who we believe supported Little Wayne during this ongoing dispute against that they were having. Um, Is Birdman alleged to be in a rival gang or he's just a rival record producer in the industry? He wasn't a rival to Mr. Williams. So he was friendly with Mr. Williams. Uh Um, Little Wayne we believe became a rival and we're talking about back in 2014 and 2015 Uh of Mr. Williams' At some point, at some point, there was some friction between the two of them uh-huh. in which Mr. Williams made subtle threats to Little Wayne um, via social media. That evidence has been entered um, before okay. this jury. And we believe that the gang, when Mr. Um, Carter came to Atlanta, uh-huh. there again, like I said earlier, Members of YSL like just converged on the compound. They left mm-hmm. their different, um, I think they were at a music studio. They all came there in an effort to intimidate or threaten Mr. Carter. Okay. So informing, um, another gang member of those activities is keeping him abreast of those activities. I believe that Mr. Copeland, we're going to confirm, was incarcerated at the time of the Little Wayne bus shooting. Um, and I want to make sure I confirm that for the record. So we believe that he was being kept abreast of what was happening while he was incarcerated. And then once he was um, released, he was provided this information in order to whatever the next steps were, whether it would be to further intimidate Mr. Carter, but he was made aware of everything that occurred while he was in custody. So do you have any evidence that then when he got out of custody, he also began to participate in this threatening of Lil Wayne and his peeps? No, we do not have any evidence. Okay, so then how is it furthering the conspiracy of being in the YSL gang and not just, hey, guess what happened today? Because it fosters cohesiveness, the fact that this YSL gang could literally shoot at a bus of a famous individual um, and made the news and it promoted the notoriety of YSL. Yeah, the shooting might have, but how is telling Mr. Copeland doing because, anything to further it? Because he then can claim notoriety as being a member of YSL. That he helps him? How does that help the gang? Because it promotes their notoriety, the fact that YSL themselves had the ability to shoot at a famous person that promotes the gang across. It, it made headline news. It made news. That across. may be again. How does how does then apprising Mr. Copeland of it further the purposes of the gang? Because it furthers his involvement. Because he's he's still in the gang. He can still promote himself. He still promotes promote himself as YSL as being a part of the group that shot at. Um, the Little Wayne's tour bus. Do you so, have any evidence that he does that? Promotes himself as YSL? Mm-mm. As, hey, I'm part of the group that shot up the bus. I don't have evidence of him saying I'm, I have evidence of him saying he's still part of YSL and claim an affiliation with YSL because collectively they mm-hmm. shot up the bus, not the specific individuals, but collectively as a group, they shot at. Does he post or brag about YSL shooting up the bus? N- 
No, we do not have any evidence of him posting right. on social media why so shooting up the place. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we are then looking at Sixty one, line twenty two through sixty two, line fourteen, where he says, I get all my information from Lil D. Because everybody's talking about it. He knows what's going on. And I don't think y'all have sufficiently satisfied the co conspirator exception there. I'll um, keep that part out. Let's move on to the next one. So Man who shot up tour buses belonging to the rapper Lil Wayne pleaded guilty and accepted a 10-year prison sentence. He had until today to take a deal. Man known on the streets as Pee Wee or Roscoe will spend 10 years in prison. We told you about a case last week in which his office asked the judge for a 350-year sentence in another gang case. So it's likely Jimmy Winfrey saw the writing on the wall. April incident on I-285 where two buses belonging to the entourage for rapper Lil Wayne came under gunfire. Prosecutors say a simmering rap feud and gang tensions led to it. They believe they could pin Winfrey as the gunman. He was indicted on 27 counts, including a rarely, if ever, used charge that references domestic terrorism. The charges Winfrey pled to are gang-related counts. DA Vic Reynolds making no apology for his take-no-prisoners approach to gang charges. If you come to Cobb County, you shoot at a bus. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but this gentleman shot at a bus over some beef that started in Atlanta, we're not going to tolerate that. Either you can see the time of day on a 10-year sentence, or you're going to be serving two, three, four hundred years as the DA has professed publicly that he would ask on every single gang case. This video from back in 2015, bullet holes in rapper Lil Wayne's shot up tour bus. Well, the man responsible was caught and convicted back in 2015. But tonight, a major development in the case. In fact, a major reversal. The Georgia Supreme Court has thrown out the conviction but here's why this is so unexpected and rare. Jimmy Winfrey, the man who was convicted, actually pleaded guilty to the charges, admitted he did it, and took a deal. So what went wrong here? Well, the trial judge got involved in the plea deal negotiations, and that's a major no-no for a judge. Um, I also think it's important for the court to be aware that the state did not call uh, Mr. Carter, Mr. Dwayne Carter, is on, is on their witness list. They said that they were going to call him. They did not call Mr. Brian Williams okay. on their witness list. They stated at one point they were going to call because we have a short list. Um, okay. And evidence came out that, and I don't know how familiar the court is, but uh, when people are in the entertainment business, they um, advertise themselves, promote themselves, drum up interest by doing things that are, you know, I'm promoting um, a, a, an event for young children or come to my concert, I'm going to kill somebody. It, it floods the Internet and it's a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. So you're being told like like it's proven. It's not proven that there was this feud and Mr. Stillwell is going to do this. There's zero evidence. I've interviewed these people that the game, it's a band. It's a musical band. The game is G-A-M-E. That they were shot at, that they were bothered, that there was any issue. This is all the theory of the state. It's also, the real theory is that there's this gang war. That's the, I'm just repeating a term. Between a, a ledge gang of YSL and a ledge gang, gang of IF. These other people have nothing to do with that. I heard you ask earlier, like, you know, so this was involved in, in the, there's nothing. This is, this is just what we've been dealing with in this case. It's just everything has come in on a state's theory without the evidence backing it up. Yeah. And then the gang experts, quote unquote, come in and they say, well, this is what we said. And we found out. And I asked, well, who'd you find out from? And they say, I don't know. I don't have a file. I can't give you a report. And and that's what we've been dealing with. Miss Hilton said earlier, oh, and Mr. Winfrey pled guilty to this. That's a subject of a motion that I don't think you touched on yet. But um, I did an attorney proffer. I sent it to you once you were announced as the honorable court taking over. I sent you eight attachments. 
And what happened in that is Mr. Winfrey did plead guilty. He was charged in another county, Cobb County, before the Honorable Judge Staley. And he pled guilty. He was charged with a RICO violation, gang act. It was a long indictment. He was indicted mm-hmm. alone with the shooting on April 26th of 2015. You've been referred to it today as a little, it's a Wayne, little Wayne, little Wayne bus shooting. Okay. What the state did though was, um, was rather shocking. They had Detective Racy on the stand. Over objection, they played a recording from jail of two people who are not testifying in the case, saying that when Mr. Winfrey gets out of jail in Cobb County, there's half a quarter of a million dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and a Porsche waiting for him, a Porsche vehicle waiting for him. The state took that with Detective Racy, who was under the directive of Ms. Hilton, and said, well, that's his reward for not um, folding and giving testimony against the gang. And then Ms. Hilton asks Detective Racy, and within a month, Mr. Winfrey pled guilty. So I asked to approach the bench. Mm-hmm. There's a case. It's Winfrey versus State in the Georgia Supreme Court. I could get to the site. That vacated that guilty plea. That guilty plea was found to be coerced by the Honorable Judge Staley. And it's void and cannot be used. I raised that with Judge Glanville to say, well, how did that happen just now? Judge Glanville would not let me ask Detective Racy about the fact that Judge Staley coerced the plea. It was not a plea. The state comes back after that conference say, and then within the next year, was there just, for whatever reason, another guilty plea entered by Mr. Winfrey? That wasn't true. It was five years later. And Mr. Winfrey entered an Alfred plea, specifically mm-hmm. said, I do not admit guilt. This is on the record. Yeah. And he had the Honorable Steve Sado, which is S-A-D-O-W, representing him. And he specifically said, I'm going to trial, except I've been in jail for five years. Right. The time sort of said, the point I'm trying to make to you, and I thank you for allowing me to speak a long time. I didn't expect to go into all this. But it is, you know, you are... You, you are, you need the lawyers to tell you what went on because you're catching up and accurately. And just to say that this is intrinsic, this is extrinsic evidence. This is not dealing with the gang war. This is dealing with a, an issue that arguably it's up to the jury. I understand that. Arguably is all advertising or puffing. And to act like this is reality without giving you the other side is just wrong. So that's why I want. All right. Thank you. I understand that a lot of this portions of this case, the state's theory is, hey, they may be saying this in the context of promoting or of singing even, but they're talking about real life and we can use it as evidence. I know that the defense position is, and I assume you're going to argue to the jury if we get to that, is y'all, this is a music industry kind of, this is how the business works. And that's all it is. And that's not up to me to decide. That's up to the jury to decide whether, you know, which theory they think is the convincing one and whether the state has proven its case beyond a reasonable doubt or not. Um, so I, I appreciate the background and I understand that. Um, with regard to the um, guilty plea that at the time, I mean, he, he did enter a guilty plea. My understanding is, and I, I read um, what you had filed, I didn't know that there was anything still pending in terms of anything for me to decide because that's already happened in this case. Um, and even if his later plea was an Alford, we all know that an Alford plea is this, I mean, he may not be admitting guilt, but it could be used. At, he's, he's saying, I'm, I'm pleading guilty because I think it's in my best interest. Man, I've already basically done the time. I might as well plead guilty and have this done and in my past, but it still can be used as evidence against him. Um, so, you know, I, I may have, I don't know what I would have done with regard to whether I let you probe that issue or not, 
with this witness. Um, but that already happened. So is there anything still pending that I need to rule on with regard to that? 